Last time on Left Behind. The White House wants PanCon to recommend a pilot. You're on the list. What is wrong with controlling global news when we are headed toward peace? I can't imagine ever being involved in something like this. So you have any more surprises for me? Stay on your toes, Rayford. It's gone. Whatever was there is just gone. Mr. Secretary General, I just took a call from the target. Very good work. Flowers still in the trash? Dad! Who was it? It's Buck Williams. He won't leave. Honest, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do! Based on Tribulation Force, the second book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents Episode 17 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. me, Buck. I'm not playing games. Well, you think you can wipe this all away with a cheap little bouquet and then I'm just supposed to ignore the Chloe, fact... Chloe, I didn't buy the flowers. I didn't send the flowers and I don't know who did. I had nothing to do with the flowers. You didn't? No. Oh. It seems to me you have another admirer. Yeah, right. Look, but... um, there's been a communication breakdown yeah, boy, here. I'll say. I thought we pretty much hit it off when well, we met. That's what I thought. When I'm away... I think about you, Chloe, a lot. Not only me, apparently. What? No, no. Go on with your speech. Um, between Sunday and Friday night, well, I did a lot of thinking about us, our future. And... Oh, fuck. If there had been a future for us, it would have been exclusive. Because there's no way I'm going to well, share wait a minute. it. Would have been? Would have been? <gasps> when did you give up on us? Well, this morning. That shouldn't surprise you. Chloe! <laughs> There's something messed up here, and I'm not sure what. Now, please, I want you to listen to me. Hey, could you two please speak up or, or, or just whisper? If I can't hear, I'm going to bed. Dad, go to sleep. <laughs> oh. <sighs> you know, I almost had myself talked into giving you the let's be friends routine until this afternoon. This afternoon? When you saw somebody, right? Well, I don't want to get into where I was right now. Yeah, I'll bet you don't. But I do. I want to talk about Alice. Alice? Uh, how do you know Alice? How do you know her? That's the question. She's new. She took Lucinda's secretary's place. And that's it? <laughs> yes. Why? I talked to her, Buck. She told me you two are engaged. What? What are you talking about, engaged? I just met her. Then where were you all day? I told you, I don't want to get into that yet. Fine, then this conversation is over. Chloe. Get out. No, listen to me. <sighs> Sit down. <sighs> Please. Alice is engaged, oh, but well, not to me. You were checking up on me. I went to your condo, Buck. You invited me, remember? My condo. That's where I oh, saw her. Oh, man, Chloe... Oh, my plans changed, and I never told you. That's my fault. She had your keys! Oh, I asked Alice to deliver some equipment from the office this morning. I had to be in New York today. New York? Yeah. New York? Mm-hmm. So you weren't with her? No. Uh, and you didn't send the flowers? Oh, I'm really sorry. Uh, you're sorry? <laughs> You're sorry? Oh, I am so embarrassed. If you never want to speak to me again, I will totally understand. It's okay, I just, Chloe. Yeah. Chloe. Oh, wow. Wow. You know what? You better go. What? I wasn't presentable when you got here, and I sure haven't gotten any better. I think I'm... Can you mind if I camp out on your porch? I'd kind of like to be here when you are presentable. You don't have to do this. Do what? You're sorry, I forgive you. Case closed, right? Well... Um... So, is everything all right?
right down there, it uh, got kind of quiet. It's okay, Dad. We're making out now. <laughs> Chloe. Uh, young lady. Yeah. Come on. Let's take a walk. Okay. Good night, Dad. Good night, Richard. Uh, you're going to forgive me for this, right? We'll get back to you on that. <laughs> I want you to know I'm really sorry for... Chloe, we only have seven years. That's done. Let's move on. That's an interesting way to look at it. Of course, I'm gonna need to find out who's sending you flowers. <laughs> Probably one of your many old boyfriends. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I've been thinking about this. Some guy at Stanford you put on the shelf? I told you. I dated when I was a freshman, but then he graduated. And I never heard from him again. It's definitely not an old flame. And you've ruled out your dad? He flat out denied it. Hmm. So who's left? Well, think about it. Oh, no. You don't think... Well, who else is there? I can't imagine. Bruce? I do tell him how much I get out of his messages. Maybe hmm. I'm being seen as more friendly than I intend to be. Well, he is a sharp guy. Could you think of him that way? Fuck! He's older than you! Really? That old? <laughs> you know what I mean. What am I gonna do? I, I, I don't want to hurt him. Well, I think the jury's still out on that one. He's still grieving the loss of his wife and kids. Hmm. Having never loved like that, it's hard to even imagine what he's going through. You said once you were never serious about anybody. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Not even a romantic near miss? Well, uh... A couple of times I thought I was in love, <laughs> but I guess I jumped the gun. One girl a year ahead of me in grad school dumped me because I was too slow to make a move on her, I guess. <laughs> really? Uh, apparently I'm a little old-fashioned that way. So you weren't the typical college hotshot? Uh, I could tell you I was, or I could tell you the truth. And you never slept around? Oh, <laughs> My reasons weren't terribly pure, but no, I mean, it wasn't out of a huge sense of morality. I was pretty consumed with journalism. I'm becoming somebody. <laughs> People always thought I got around because I ran in some fast circles. You're not apologizing, are you? Well, I don't mean to be. You think maybe God was protecting you? Even before you were, you know. I never thought of it that way. Could be. So, what about you and the boys? <laughs> None of your business, pal. <laughs> oh, I see how this works. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> no, actually, uh, my boyfriend's in high school and the one at Stanford. We weren't models of, um, what did my mom call it? Propriety. Um, but I never actually gave them what they wanted, which is probably the reason I never lasted with any of them. Well, uh, that's good news. Oh, well, I mean, not the not lasting part, I think. Uh, no, actually, that's good news, too. Uh, could we talk about something else? <laughs> you are an old codger, aren't you? I, I'm just not used to all this. So you want to talk about something else? Yes. <laughs> all right. Why'd you go to New York? We speak of the things which were, and the things which are, and we prophesy of the things which are yet to come. The Sovereign Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth, has given us the power to shut the sky. And thus it shall be that your land will cry out, your soil will become dust. Rain will not fall upon the land of Israel. Neither will the heavens open to you for three and one half years. The Sovereign Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth, has given us power to shut the heavens, and thus it shall be.
right now. This has to come from you, sir. We want to seem very spontaneous, not scripted. I got it, I got it. You want it to sound like I mean it. Yes, sir. Now, why don't we start again? This time, to those who say... Yeah, yeah. Uh, To those who say, no, wonder. (laughs) To those who wonder if this is some kind of backroom deal, I say this. Good, good. Every peace-loving American, tired of politics as usual, ought to be glad uh, for sir, what... Sir, let's try celebrate. Celebrate this gesture of peace. Okay. Try that. Okay. Everyone tired of politics as usual will celebrate this gesture of peace. <clears throat> uh, hello? Chairman, are you awake? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Late night, huh? Uh... Yeah, but I'm awake now, Mr. Bailey. Well, you've still got it. <clears throat> Sir? Still got the touch. How does it feel to write another award winner? <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Thorough, tight, all the quotes, all the angles. You were even fair to the alien kooks and the religious wackos. Uh, I thought it was important to include... It was. <laughs> These people are the heartland of America, no matter how wild their theories. Just wanted you to know it was a good job. Why don't you take the day off? This thing will hit the stands a week from yesterday, and you'll be the talk of the town. <laughs> day off sounds pretty good. What's the next thing on your plate? Well, well, Steve Plank's trying to get me to go to Israel next week. The treaty signing, yeah. yeah. We've got a slew of people going. I was going to put the religion guy in the cover story. Jim Borland? Uh, have you got a problem with that? Well, this is bigger than just a religion story, sir. You've got the One World Faith meeting in New York, the Jews talking about rebuilding the temple, and the Catholics lining up a new pope. Plus, the two preachers at the Wailing Wall. Yeah. What's with those crazies? Hmm. They predict no rain and everything dries up. Plank wants me to fly as part of the U.N. contingency. Sir? Yeah, I don't know, Cameron. There's that little problem of objectivity. Well, sir, I've never traded favors. Oh, I know you haven't, and Plank knows you haven't. But does Carpathia understand journalism? I'm not sure he does. Well, neither am I, and I'm afraid he's going to try stealing you. Well, not much chance of that. Actually, they want me to sit in on the signing as part of Carpathia's delegation. That would be totally inappropriate. Oh, but what a great spot. Oh, what a great spot. The only media hound at the table. Well, if you don't think I should fly with them, I could go commercial. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want you owing Carpathia anything, but... Oh, there's not much I wouldn't do to see you peeking over his shoulder when he signs that treaty. Borland. Jim, hi, it's Buck. Got the email, huh? Yeah, we need to talk. You knew I was in line for the cover, Buck. You stole this one. You don't think I can handle it, do you? Jim, listen, Bailey came to me. We talked Yeah, 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 the old man said it was his idea, but I know what's going on. Now, wait a second. I did tell Bailey I saw it as more of a political than a religious story, but if it means that much to you, I'll insist you do it. Right. What's the catch? That I get your stories in one new one. You want my beat? Just for a few weeks. In my mind, you've got the most enviable job on the weekly right now. Why don't I trust you, Williams? You sound like Tom Sawyer trying to get me to paint your fence. (laughs) Jim, I'm dead serious. I'm interested in the one world religion story, the temple, the pope, the two guys at the Wailing Wall, and another one in your bailiwick that's just starting to brew. Let me do those, and I'll see to it that you get the cover on the treaty. Okay, I'll bite. What's the big scoop that I've missed? Well, you didn't miss it. I just have a friend who was in the right place at the right time. Who? Forget the source, Jim. The story is a... Rabbi named Soon Ben Judah. I know him. You do? Uh, well, I know of him. Everybody does. They say he's an impressive guy. You've heard of what he's up to, then? Some research project or something. Well, yeah, and I want to keep an eye on it. Wait a minute. Now, you're not one of the suckers buying into the prophetic all this has been foretold in the Bible theories, are you? You're the religion editor, Jim. Do they have a point? It doesn't sound like something God would do to me. You're allowing that there is a God. In a manner of speaking, God's in all of us, Buck. You know my view. And it hasn't changed since the disappearances? Nope. So was God in the people who disappeared? Sure. So now part of God is gone. Okay. Well, you're way too literal for me, Williams. Next you're going to tell me the treaty proves Carpathia is the Antichrist. Every peace-loving American, tired of politics as usual, ought to celebrate this gesture of peace. Our new plane's a beauty. Chloe, and take a look at this. There's plenty of room on it for I'm the right, entire Dad, United look. States and United Nations delegations. But I have decided 
It is only right that the UN contingency have the plane to themselves for this maiden voyage. What? The treaty signing. Until our right. current Air Force But the president's going, Air isn't he? Yeah. We will On the christen old the plane. new 777 I don't get it. Neither do I. Global Community One and offer it to Secretary General Carpathia with our best wishes. Mr. Secretary General, may you fly in comfort. Dad, does this mean that you would... Shh, 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 I would just, like just a minute, to thank President Fitzhugh for this most generous gesture. We at the United Nations are deeply moved, grateful, and humbled. We look Man, forward to a like... wonderful ceremony... That's the job you told me about. You'd be flying that plane? Um, I don't know. Uh, what, what happens to the guy who's in there now? It's like musical pilots. We look forward to other You're sure you don't want the job the flying the new plane? Uh, more sure now than ever. I don't want to have anything to do with Carpathia. Of peace. March, <laughs> good to hear from you. Buck, I miss you already. One day you're in, the next day you're shipped off to Chicago. Yeah, someday I'll give you the dirt. Hey, I hear the boss has been trying to reach me. Right now he's got Jim Borland in there. Sounds like a wrestling match. You might want to interrupt them. I'm betting the meeting has something to do with me. Hmm, your funeral. Hang on. Williams, you've got a lot of nerve acting like an executive editor. Sir? Since when is it your pledge to assign cover stories? Telling Borland and I had him in mind for the treaty piece. It didn't happen that way. Then you kissed up to him by taking his garbage stories so we could get on the cover. I That's didn't do that. Happened. I can't keep up with you two. I have a mind to cover the thing myself. Now, what's going on? Uh, Chloe, I just got a call. I, I think you ought to take it. She says she knew your mother. Okay. Hello? Chloe? Yes? Oh, I'm so glad to talk with you. I remember your mother mentioning you. This is wonderful. Uh, okay. How did you know my mom? I'm sorry. My name is Amanda. Amanda White. I met your mother at one of the church's home Bible studies. It took me a long time to recall her name. I, I remembered it was like Iron and Steel, and it was finally Irene Steele. Great. D so, um, you're still here? I mean... You didn't get taken. It's been a long road for me, but I finally became a Christian. That's why I called the church. It was mostly because of the things your mother said at that Bible study that brought it all together for me. I called New Hope to see if the church was still going. Well, it's going strong. You should come on Sunday. I'd love to meet you, Chloe. I really would. Anything I can tell the Secretary General? Huh. Not even you can use his name? I choose not to. It's huh. a matter of respect. Even Hattie calls him that. They spend almost as much time together off the job as on. Yeah, well, don't rub it in. Hey, what's to regret? You provided a world leader with someone he adores, and you changed Hattie's life forever. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Hey, come on, Buck. She was a nobody from nowhere. You know that. And now she's on the front page of history. And the front page is suddenly a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's... what's the story with you? Well, f Steve, I'm no closer to a decision. I don't get it, Buck. Where's the glitch? This is everything you've ever wanted. I'm a journalist, Steve, not a public relations guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks a lot, kiddo. Mm. Look, you called me about this Borland thing. I think it's a big mistake. You'll recall I never assigned him a cover. Well, the treaty signing shouldn't be a cover. The other pieces are the big stories, the ones about oh, the... Come on, kiddo. This will be the most widely covered event in history. The UN signs a peace treaty with Israel, and you think it's bigger than the disappearances of billions all over the globe. Well, yeah, that, but... Well, I... yeah, that. Good grief, Steve. The treaty's the story, not the ceremony. You know that. So you're not coming? I'll still take you up on being at the table for the signing, but even Bailey agrees Global Weekly ought to send me. Wait a minute. You told Bailey about our offer? Not the job offer, just the plane ride. Why do you think your meeting with Carpathia was so clandestine? We didn't want Bailey to know this. He doesn't know about the job offer. But how was I supposed to explain showing up in Israel and being in on the signing? We hoped Global Weekly would be your former employer by then. Don't make any assumptions, Steve. You either. Meaning? Don't expect the offer to stay on the table forever. Especially if you pull a stunt like last time. You know, I'm not sure you're cut out for political journalism at this level. Ho oh, ho, I agree it has sunk to a new low. Remember your big shot predictions about the one world currency that would never happen? Watch the news tomorrow, Pally. And remember, 
that it was all Nikolai Carpathia's doing. Ray, I need you to stop by if you can. Big doings with the new Air Force One. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's all over the news. You say the word and you'll be flying that plane to Israel with Nikolai Carpathia on board. Uh, look, I need some more time. Ray, can you come in or not? No, not today. I'm I'm in the middle of something. I, mm, um, I'll, I'll have to see you tomorrow. Well, what's so important? Look, it's it's personal. You got another deal, Guggen? Uh, well, Earl, I'm cooking, but not a deal. Hey, little girl, you know anything about this church? Just that it's crowded every Sunday. Good. I'll try it. <laughs> so are you taking the job? I could ask you the same question. I already have a job. Yeah, looks like I have one, too. <sighs> I learned more today than I learned in college all last year. Yeah, what about Bruce? I'll have to tell you all about it when we have time. Hey, what about after the meeting tonight? No, I was up too late last night. Some guy, you know. Really? Yeah. I couldn't get rid of him. Happens to me all the time. <laughs> I'll see you tonight. Okay. Later, Chloe. Dad? In the kitchen. Hey, is that what that smells like? Well, I hope so. Shrimp scampi? Your favorite. Who's coming over? The guest of honor just arrived. <laughs> you did this for me? Uh, you want to eat in the dining room? No, the kitchen's fine. All right, what's the occasion? Well, sue me. I got in touch with my feminine side. <laughs> oh, please. Anything <laughs> but that. You hungry? Absolutely. Your timing is perfect. Voila. <gasps> <laughs> Your chair, madam. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. That brings back memories. Oh. Uh. The apron-caped princess. Yeah. You remember that? <laughs> oh, I do. Do you remember Mom made me that magic wand out of that curtain rod, and then I broke the lamp with it? <laughs> you were afraid of lamps for weeks because of all the sparks. <laughs> it's not funny. I'm lucky I didn't electrocute myself. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Mm. Do you remember lightning? Oh, yes. The uh, faithful horse, lightning. <laughs> That would carry the lovely princess all around her kingdom until his knees couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> I never could get that horse to go into the kitchen. I uh, wonder if it had anything to do with the tile floor. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, you were the best horse I ever had. <laughs> I was the only horse you ever had. Yeah. Ah, uh, food's getting cold, um. I'll pray. Father, um, thank you for providing for us both food and good memories. Amen. Amen. I was thinking about Mom and Ramey today. I take it that's why you cooked this campy? Uh -huh. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. This is great. Mm. Oh, being a mom, I almost forgot. I got the strangest call today. Huh? It was this lady. She said she knew Mom. She said her name was Amanda. She she called the church? Yeah. Hmm. She became a Christian after the rapture. She said it was mostly because of Mom. Wow. Uh -huh. She attended one of the Bible studies. She lost her husband and two grown daughters in the rapture. But the funny thing was, she said she couldn't remember Mom's name. Your mom was that instrumental in her life and she didn't remember her name? Yeah, go figure. Hmm. I invited her to church. I mean, she said she wanted to get together with us. Dad? Oh, sorry. I just... Seems odd her not remembering Irene's name. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series, is based in part on the book Tribulation Force by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Witt, directed and produced by Todd Bustee. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series, is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening.